When I visit a new project for the first time, the thing that I find most exciting is imagining how I can adapt that space to the client's personality. And I think in this project, we've done exactly that. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. We've got a great show filled with sophistication and creativity and I am bringing it all to you from this triplex penthouse on the Upper East Side. From the gallery-like foyer through the well-defined living and dining areas, this home epitomizes Park Avenue elegance and luxury. Bright and airy throughout with views from virtually every room, this is a home that's sure to impress. Check out the custom millwork, coffered ceilings, and gorgeous hardwood floors, along with the marble fireplace surround, and yes, that is wood burning, all underlining the craftsmanship that went into this 7,700 square foot beauty. Let's start things off in the West Village with interior designer Alexander Doherty. See how he completely reimagined what was a modern white box into a chic entertainer's dream home filled with bespoke style and surprise. The biggest challenge on this project was taking the white box given to us by the developer and really infusing it with the client's personality. My name is Alexander Doherty and welcome to my client's duplex apartment here in the West Village. Come with me and I'll show you around. From the second you opened the front door, we wanted you to feel that you had entered a space that was very unlike any other in this building. But the big ticket item in this entranceway is in fact the staircase. We took out the original staircase as we wanted something that really accentuated a curvature to contrast with really what is a very grid-like apartment. We have a very light floor and we have a very dark ceiling. This very rich chocolate brown and this releases you into this much bigger space. Why don't you follow me? Here we are in the heart of the home, the main entertainment space. And one of the first things that you'll notice is just how much strong saturated color there is in this room. But if you look at the envelope, you'll see that it's in fact very neutral. So obviously at that point, we needed to build on color. This was quite a big space to furnish and I wanted to give the homeowners the maximum amount of seating for entertaining. So we decided to spread out the seating areas by creating one focusing on the television and another sectional in front of the window which could communicate with this space. It's casual and yet at the same time it is both elegant and refined. And that is what really captures this homeowner's personalities. And capturing your client's personalities is really one of the most important aspects of interior design. Right off the living room we find ourselves in this kitchen dining area. The original kitchen was just too contemporary. So we decided to take it out and design a kitchen that was more transitional. A mixture of marble, walnut, lacquered wood, and polished nickel. And some of the features in the kitchen really hark back to the old days. So the big hinges on the doors, the big door handles, the polished steel drawer fronts. We've managed to maintain the casual aspect of the apartment and yet bring in that elegant, refined note. Here in the den, we wanted to create a space that was very warm and inviting. And similarly to elsewhere in the apartment, we decided to use a very neutral backdrop. And we pumped up the whole vibrancy of the room by doing the mustard curtains, the teal sofa, and the rust rug. The ceiling you'll see, as opposed to being this time just a flat chocolate brown, we've gone for a Venetian plaster, which has a tremendous amount of sheen. On the wall behind me, you'll see a whole gallery wall of paintings that we found in Paris that the homeowner liked, which give the space a collected, cozy, and elegant feel. What we wanted to do in the bedroom was really bring down the color and the vibrancy and play up a neutral theme. We decided to go in the direction of moody grays, lavenders, and mauves. 
What we really aim for in this room is a feeling of calm, serenity, a place to come at night to escape the noise of New York City and a very different feeling from the atmosphere in the rest of the apartment. When I visit a new project for the first time, the thing that I find most exciting is imagining how I can adapt that space to the client's personality. And I think in this project, we've done exactly that. I hope that you've enjoyed this tour as much as I have, and I look forward to meeting you on my next project. Coming up, we are in Laurel Canyon in Los Angeles for a look at this modern take on Hollywood glamour. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're in Laurel Canyon in Los Angeles with film producer Heidi Jo Markle. Heidi built her dream home as a completely custom, modern take on Hollywood glam and a celebration of indoor-outdoor living every step of the way. And now we join her for a closer look. Hi, my name is Heidi Jo Markell. I'm a film producer from Los Angeles. I decided kind of crazily to build my own house. I love this neighborhood. We're in Laurel Canyon. It's a special place because it's nature juxtaposed to the city. You're my first guest. I'd like to welcome you into my house and give you a tour. Come inside with me. This is a modern home, but with an homage to Art Deco. So you'll notice the cantilevered entryway, the cantilevered staircase, the cantilevered fireplace. I love this area because it's the comfort spot in my home. It's where we just sit by the fire, cozy up, have hot chocolate, and share ideas. When we designed this house, it was incredibly important to me that we had this feeling of indoor-outdoor. Being just steps away from nature as you're having your dinner, you're really in it. The pool is just such a central feature and focus of this house. This is California. We love the ocean. We love the water. For years, I had a big problem when I entertained. The whole party was in my kitchen. So we designed this amazing open floor plan so that I could entertain and be with them. Because my partner and I are filmmakers, of course, we're gonna have a screening room. So it's lovely to sit here and watch the classic films, but this is also our workspace. We have to watch our films sometimes 40, 50 times to make sure that there's no mistakes. Just check out the performance and go, oh, Jerry Butler messed up his lines. Let's cut that scene. Just kidding, Jerry never messes up his lines. Adjacent to the screening room is a workspace where a lot of the creativity flows, script ideas and rewrites in this beautiful office. A really great place for your guests to hang out too. One thing I need to point out to you before we get to the primary, I fretted about what to do with this large space next to the staircase. And when my designer pointed out to me these incredible swivel chairs, this became Heidi Joe's place. The place where you can just look at the trees, the hillside, it's my absolute favorite place in the house. So welcome to my boudoir. In California, it's the inside-outside living that we love so much because 300 days a year are beautiful. So why would you ever shut the doors on those 300 days a year? Every morning here is like waking up in a time capsule. There is no stress and you just greet the day, hear the birds, feel the sun on your shoulders. It's heavenly. Along with the primary room, we have three guest bedrooms upstairs. I wanted to make sure that every bedroom, every guest bedroom had it, the same sort of feeling as my room. It's all inside out. Well, this wraps up our tour today. I hope you had a blast. I had fun having you here. Feel free to be our guest anytime. Coming up in just a few short minutes, we are with author Saman Chainani for a look at the home where he lives and creates. Welcome back.
back everyone. Now we're with Soman Chenani, best-selling author of the young adult fantasy series The School for Good and Evil, which was adapted into a hit Netflix movie. Now he takes a break from his busy life to give us a tour of what he calls his writer's nook. A delightfully designed apartment on the Upper West Side that he shares with his pooch, Dougie. Take a look as they both welcome us in. Hi, I'm Soman Shanani, an author of fantasy novels for young adults, and welcome to my home on the Upper West Side. For the last 10 years, I've written this big kind of epic fantasy series called The School for Good and Evil, which is like a mashup of fairy tales, Disney, and a little bit of Harry Potter. So I'm always on the road traveling, touring, or on location for shoots of adaptations of my books, and here's where I come to hunker down and actually write. So to keep my head clear, I don't like a lot of clutter at all. I want everything to feel kind of clean and spare, especially here in the entryway. I want it to feel like a blank piece of paper. Even with this console, I want it to be completely blank and clean all the time, except for the book that I'm currently reading. And the cool thing about this mirror is that it reminds me of the sun. And as you'll see when you look at the rest of the apartment, light is a predominant theme that guides everything I do with my writing process. This apartment is surrounded by glass on three sides, and the sun literally rises in the east, falls me around as I write to the west until it sets. So I'm a weird writer in that I don't like to write at a desk. It feels too formal and too adult for me. So I've written my last four books in this chair, and if I'm not writing, I'll never sit in it because I'm superstitious. I don't want to lose the magic, so it's strictly my writing chair. And then behind me is this awesome bookcase that I've had for many, many years. And it has uh, all my books at the top, but also all the books that are most precious to me and have given me inspiration over the years, as well as many trinkets that I picked up on tour from fans and from readers all over the world. So my favorite part about being a writer for young adults is that you still feel like you can make a difference in their lives. Young adults and teenagers are in their most intense, passionate years, and I feel like if you tell them a story that really grips them, you can actually make a difference in the way that they think. As for this director's chair, it's from my time on the set of the School for Good and Evil movie, so you're always supposed to take something from set before you leave, and so I stole this on my last day. So while this is my creation station, let me show you where I go to actually decompress. Didn't have to come too far. This is Dougie. <laughs> so one of the things I've realized about myself is that I also liked very soft things. So you have this kind of soft couch and the faux fur everywhere and the blankets everywhere. I want it to feel like this kind of absolute kind of cozy zone for me to disappear in when I'm done working. Like this antidote to the hardness of New York City outside. And it's perfect for Doug too, who usually ends up sort of swaddled in a blanket. So this coffee table has followed me around since I came to New York. And what I love about it is when the sun comes through the window and hits the coffee table, it gives this beautiful light box effect in the center of the room. And I love this mirror above the couch because it acts as the fourth window in the room and really makes it feel like I'm part of the world when I'm writing. So not surprisingly, when I wanted to choose a dining area, I chose a white table and clear chairs. And at the same time, if I'm kind of blocked in my usual writing zone or I just need a change of scenery, I'll come over here and I'm suddenly in a new brain space and can find new inspiration. And you can just sort of sit here and take in the New York City skyline. But let me show you where I go when I'm done with my day. Like the rest of the home, this bedroom isn't the biggest, but I want it to be the coziest bed I'll ever sleep in. Books are a hugely important part of my life, obviously, and so this shelf becomes my kind of curated collection. Also on the shelf, there's toys and stuff that fans are giving me, and I sort of pile it here on the bookshelf along with my favorite books. Interestingly enough, the school for good in the books is a glass castle, and that became kind of the inspiration for how I created this apartment as well. I love the feeling of being in this fantasy castle of my own imagination. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my apartment, and now that I'm in my magic writing chair with Doug, it's time to get to work. So, I will see you on the page. Look out for Saman's newest, The Fall of the School for Good and Evil. Coming up in just a few, we are in Soho at this designer's very own home. Welcome back everyone. Now we're with architectural designer Eric Clough. Eric shows how he defined intimate and comfortable living areas within the open floor plan of his own Soho loft. Take a look. 
I'm a maker of things. I've always been passionate about the way materials come together and detailing. I'm Eric Clough. I have a design firm called 212 Box. We're in Soho, and welcome to my loft. Every project for us is a collaboration with a client. So this time I was the client and I'm fairly easy to work with. So this was an opportunity to consolidate the furniture we had collected, build new furniture, and then really make this a showcase that I can bring clients over to show and also a place for beautiful dinners where we can entertain. So this is the main space with the open kitchen, dining room, living room, and there's a reading nook in the corner. In the living room, we brought everything together with this beautiful geometric rug and the slab live edge walnut table. We bought the Rove concept sectional and then just reupholstered the two Serenin chairs just to give it a little bit more vibrant fabric and texture and color. This tapestry I found in Paul Bear Market. It was full of cigarette burns and runs and things, but we spent a year mending it. You know, it came out beautifully. I am always guilty of putting beautiful marbles in a lot of our projects. So for the dining room, I definitely wanted to do a beautiful marble table. This marble in particular, I had found and purchased the entire block. It's beautiful white with red vein, fairly unique and extraordinary. It's always tough when you have long dinners if you don't have a comfortable chair. This one in particular hugs your body. And the color wasn't by chance. We picked up the rouge from the tapestry and highlights the veins from the white marble. And for our dinner parties, we've got beautiful placemats that we made as one of our products that has outlines of the cutlery, so every fork has its own place. We also had lots of books, so I designed two towering bookcases, one for fiction, one for poetry. And then of course, to celebrate all of literature, we have the Iliad all on one page. So in the kitchen, most of the cabinets were existing. However, we added the peninsula, added the bookshelf, and reclad the fronts of the cabinets in the scalloped walnut. And then I put in a beautiful island with a marble and chopping block inset. This has been really incredible gathering space for all of us, you know, having friends at the bar, and it's become a communal kitchen. So we're in our bedroom, the primary suite, right off the main living area. All this beautiful morning light comes in, so the bed is across from the windows. And again, in here, our design was uh, some new pieces, found objects, and reupholstered items. The bedside tables are antiques that we had re-lacquered below the Constanzina lamps. The sofa was a found kind of beat up sofa in Chelsea that we had reupholstered. That's perfect just across from the bed. And then the rest of the furniture I've been collecting over the years from BDDW, a new table, the lamp, the bench, and the bed, and punctuated with beautiful artwork, it all comes together. Like all projects at 212 Box, including my home, we bring together custom millwork, unique pieces and found objects, tying them all together to form a cohesive design. Thank you for stopping by. When we come back, we are with this artist at the Brooklyn townhouse he calls home. Welcome back. Now we're in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn with artist and designer Harlan Brandon. Harlan celebrates the architecture of his classic townhouse with his own pieces that play off the original details just beautifully. See for yourself. Art is essential in design. I'm Harlan Brandon. This is my home in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn. This Gilded Age brownstone was built in 1910. I kept many of the original details as they were, and I can't wait to show it to you. And here in the foyer, you can see some of these incredible details. Starting with these etched glass windows in the entry door. And above me is an original light. Originally, it was gas but now it's electric. That whole transition of time is something that we're very conscious of throughout the house. The element of time and the use of time. This is my living room. This is where I honor the architectural details of the house and marry them together with my artwork. One of the reasons why we took this house, it came with the artwork. Look at this ceiling. Oftentimes I sit down here, contemplate, look at the ceiling, be inspired. 
And here you can see some of the original details, the moldings, the shutters, and this spectacular, enormous mirror. If I wasn't vain before this mirror, I am now. The majority of the furnishings in the living room are from Ralph Lauren Home. There are also a number of different pieces integrated in that are family heirloom pieces. This is from my father's bar. He was a connoisseur, as far as he was concerned, of gin. Oh, that's nice. I also have a piece from my grandmother, Sonia, on the other side of the room. When you renovate, when you refurbish, and you lose all of what was there in the past, you lose a sense of connection. This is a grand space and a wonderful space to display art. I like to see the art in a living environment before it goes out to the client. In each one of the images, there's a building going on and the color also speaks to emotion. Art is expanding and communicating the broadness of civilization. Art is not my only creative outlet. Let me introduce you to my second. I love to cook. The kitchen had to be someplace that I could create and entertain at the same time. These cabinets are inspired by a friend of mine in London. He had the same exact cabinets, pretty much. I sketched them out and said, I can create this for myself. I didn't tell him. There's an enormous amount of storage space throughout. And like the rest of my house, the design in here has a story. Yet another family heirloom mirror. This is from my mother's, it's from the 1940s. The fireplace is from the Gilded Age. You can't create mistakes. When there's a patina, when there's a scratch, wonderful, beautiful. Oftentimes artwork in the process creates challenges. No different than cooking. But when it works, you pierce the veil of majesty. In my bedroom, I wanted to give it a traditional feel. I started with this 1930s anmoir, and we paired it with a Baker sleigh bed, a Baker chaise lounge, as well as Ralph Lauren pillows. A lot of what I do requires so much of me. This is a place that you come that's serene, calm, and inviting. Art is essential to life and interior design as well. And a house's history should be embraced and celebrated. And my home is an example of both. Thank you for taking a look. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>